Dr. Scott Stevens here with a little video about pie charts and bar charts. If you take a look at places where people are trying to convey information to you that has a numeric basis, like the Pew Research Center here with their news in the numbers, a lot of times you'll have this story, this one about the, the uh, number of religious adherents in the world in various religions, but they'll convey that information, usually quite quickly, with a graph. And here are two kinds of graphs and the ones that we're talking about today pie chart on the left and a bar chart on the right. Both of these kinds of graphs are good for dealing with categorical data and that's what we've got here. That it is categorical because if you ask any particular person what's your religious affiliation the answer that comes back is simply the name of a category. I'm a Christian, I'm a Hindu and so on. When you're talking about a totality, how everybody breaks down into subgroups, a pie chart can be a very good choice. And we can see in the graph on the left that the graph quickly conveys that presently Christians are the most common uh, religious group, followed by Muslims, followed by people who don't consider themselves to be religious, or do not affiliate with a particularly well-known religion, and so on. The graph on the right also conveys this information, but it gains something and loses something. It's a bar chart, and it's showing the frequency in each category. So what we gain from the chart on the right is knowing how many people fall into each category. 2.3 billion people is a lot of people, for example. On the other hand, the relative proportions, the sizes of the groups, the relative frequency, is better conveyed by the pie chart on the left-hand side. We're going to discuss both of these kinds of graphs, how to create them in Excel, and the do's and don'ts for using them. Once again, they're both good graphs to use if you're talking about categorical data, but they can also be used in some cases when the data is not categorical, when instead it's numeric. Let's take a look at some examples. To keep the length down, I'm going to focus only on pie charts in this video, and we'll do another one to talk more about bar charts. I have a page here of information that I've downloaded from the U.S. Census Bureau that has way too much information, as you can see, about the a dispersion of household incomes in the U.S. between 1967 and 2015. I'm not going to try to convey all of this. What kind of chart I use depends on what my data is and what point I'm trying to get across. So let me scroll down here a little bit and find a set of data that I want to talk about today. This part. Uh, I'm sorry, not that part. This part uh, here. Okay. Basically the idea is this. Let's take the U.S. and divide it into five groups. The poorest one-fifth, the one-fifth after that, and so on up to the richest one-fifth in terms of annual income. How does the money that we collect get dispersed among those various households? Um, because I'm talking about a totality, all the money that's earned by all households, and how much of it goes to each one of these groups, a pie chart seems to be a natural choice. Now, if you take a look at these numbers here, they are percentages, but you'll see that they are not adding up to 100%, because this last category isn't really part of the same table. It doesn't talk about one-fifth of the population, but only the, the top 5%. I'm leaving that out, therefore. Let's make a pie chart of the rest. I'm going to ha highlight the headings for each section and also the numerical value and then I'll say insert and go over here to my kinds of charts I'll choose a pie chart and you have a number of different choices and it'll give you a preview of what they look like you'd like your chart to look nice of course but you also don't want to make it overly complicated there's the KISS principle which simply means keep it simple stupid that is anything which appears on the chart should enhance the message you're trying to get across let's go ahead and choose this very simple kind and I can see that I have a number of different options that I can choose, that I can use to begin with, and then refine those if I want to. Let me take a look at these and say, well, that one looks actually pretty good to me, because it conveys both the percentage that's in each category, and also what the category is. I might like to know, for example, what group is represented by each of those, rather than having to look up the color code. But, as we'll see, there's some upsides and downsides to that. I'll choose this type. Obviously the chart needs a title and it should be as informative as possible. I might choose something like dispersion of US income uh, 2015. I'll admit that title's not quite as clear as I might like. Ideally a graph should be able to be interpreted without actually looking at the, the text around it or the data that it comes from. Um, this one, you have to know what a quintile is for that to make sense. Yet once you do, the information is actually pretty powerful. You could think of it this way. Represent the entire population of the U.S. by five people, since each one of the sections in this pie represents the same number of people. And imagine that the entire money being earned over the course of the year is a dollar. If that's the case, the richest person, the highest income person, gets 51 cents out of that dollar. 
the second person gets 23, the third one 15 cents, the fourth 8 cents, and the person who's working for the least money only 3 cents. That is, the top 20% are making about 16 times as much money as the lowest 20%. A pretty big difference. If you look at wealth rather than income, the difference is even greater. In a capitalistic society, you wouldn't expect these pieces of the pie to be the same size for everybody, but the disparity might surprise you. If I'm looking at this picture, I can decide whether I like how things are presented or not. I can change things by adding chart elements. Notice that that menu item will be there if I've clicked inside the chart and gone up here and said Design. Adding the chart elements, I can change the title, which I've already done, move where it is, for example, okay, or leave it alone above the chart. I can uh, add data labels or change how they're presented. Right now, for example, they're toward the center. I can put them on the inside end or outside the picture. Right? Or I can say, fit, put them where they fit best. You'll want to mess around with these things to decide how you want your picture to look. And you have more options too. For example, do you want to make it so that the entire text is there with a call out? Right now this looks a bit messy, but we could play around with those things. If I say with more data options, I can actually choose exactly what does and doesn't appear. Percentages or not. Category names or not. Those are pretty big and a bit messy, but I could go back, for example, and take this and... Oh, change the size of the box and change the size of the type back here with the font menu I could make it smaller 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 and play around until it fit in is this better well in my opinion no but you can make your graph look pretty much the way that you want you have a lot of control on the other hand like I said in this graph I don't think I would want those things that looks like a pretty good option for me I can move these boxes around as, I, as you've seen I can also change the size of the pie itself a good thing to do with that is click outside the the Pie, but close to it, and then you can resize this way. There is no single best way to present your graph. You want it to be clear, you want it to be easy to, con con to uh, understand, and you want it to convey the information that you're trying to get across. There are places where pie charts are a wonderful choice when dealing with categorical data where you're trying to look at a totality and how it breaks down into subgroups, but there are some places where it doesn't work well either. Let's take a few minutes to look at that. I'll get rid of this graph here and look at a different set of data, which is for each of the five groups that we've just discussed, what's the mean income? Here's the average income of people in the lowest quintile, the lowest 20%. On average, they make $12,000 a year. In the highest group, they make $202,000 a year. If I took this data and put it into a pie chart, the interpretation is more difficult because it doesn't add up to 100%. I would probably be smarter using something like a bar chart for these numbers. When the total that you're talking about don't add up to 100% in any reasonable interpretation, a pie chart's always going to be a bad choice. Here's a second example. I have information here about populations of various countries, and that certainly adds up to 100% of the world's population. So I could certainly try this with a pie chart, but there are a lot of countries, as you can see. So if I do this, I'll end up with a pie chart, which is, well, you take a look. I'll highlight the names and how many people are in each region, highlight all the choices, and then say, insert pie chart. <coughs> Hopefully you see the problem right away. This pie, even if I make it big, consists mostly of tiny, tiny wedges. We can't even begin to get an idea of what's going on with those small countries. In fact, the Excel program actually makes them look almost invisible as they come around, and totally invisible, in fact. Pie charts are usually best if you don't have too many categories. Once you get above well, eight categories or so, a pie chart's probably not going to be the tool that you want. So what could we do with this data? Well, I could decide, for example, to only look at the biggest countries and to put everybody else together. For example, I'm going to keep the top seven countries here. I'll add a row for everyone else and record other or all others and add up with the sum command all of the other countries in the world like that. There's its population. Now I'll make a graph of these columns. I have eight categories. That's okay for a pie chart. Insert a pie chart. And now I've got one that looks like this. I can change it to a different graph. And maybe I don't like the legend being at the bottom, but would rather have it in each region. You know how to do that. I'll go over to my chart elements here. Say data labels. More label options. And I'll say that for each one, I want to know its category name. Okay. What country am I talking about? 
And maybe I think I don't need a legend in this problem. So if I wanted to, I could go back and delete the legend. Just get rid of it. Okay. Now I've got callouts for the various countries, and some of them might be longer than I want. I could move where this circle is. We talked about that. And I could even move where this text is, if I felt that I could, it would be clearer to spread things out a little bit, like moving Brazil up here. Okay. When I'm done, I've gotten information that about half of the world's population falls in just a few countries. China, India, the U.S., Indonesia, Brazil, Pakistan, and Nigeria. The remaining countries make up less than 50% of the population. So this graph is still pretty informative, telling us that other countries are smaller than that. Of course, this numerical quantity might not be as interesting as a percentage. Can you figure out how to get the percentage instead of the count? You should be able to. Go back to Add Chart Element. Data labels, more data options, and over here, where is it? Where are our options? Um, our data labels. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let's try that again. Graph, chart elements, data labels, data label options. I would like to have not the value, but instead the percentage. Same kind of graph. But this now shows that the U.S. has 4% of the population, while both India and China have a whopping 18%. That, I think, probably is a bit more indicative of what I'd like to get across. So that's a quick introduction to how you can use pie charts to get across information uh, of, usually, how a totality breaks up into subgroups. Hope you enjoyed it.